Hello, uh, I'm Dave, Dave Heathcote, um, and I'm the guy who innovated the PIP, PIP device, or we call it PIP Tech, or PIP Technology, Pre-Ignition Technology. And I just want to show you quickly how we can prevent fires from occurring from any form of refrigeration equipment. And it's just simply this device. This is whatever country it's going to be used in. This is the uh, United Kingdom style uh, socket. And this is the hot end that does the work. And what we do is we clip it on to the rear of the compressor, which is where most of the electric, electrical connections are made and where the inductive heat can be uh, overheat here. And this is a simple device. It doesn't do anything unless it's called upon to do something, 85 degrees C, which none of this should ever reach uh, in the position there, where all the connections are. If something happens, as happened with Grenfell in London, with a refrigerator there, and we remember that. We don't want that to happen, and this can go anywhere in the world. See, I'm going to plug it into a British, uh, a British socket. I should have switched it off first, but I didn't. And we're going to simulate it very simply by switching this hairdryer on because it's easier to simulate a fault. And we're going to show you what happens. Remember, nothing will happen, and this thing will stay here forevermore if everything behaves itself. But when there's a fault, which I'm simulating now, it's as easy as that. That switches the whole circuit off, and this is better than having a fire, even if you have to call an electrician, because you can't switch it back on again until you do call an electrician. And he will then find the fault, and plug the device, and there you go. Now, we also do this. We can do this in Europe too, using the Shuko socket. We're simply going to put the Shuko socket onto the clip. Again, it does absolutely nothing. Here we go. Until it's called upon to do so. Same as the British one. Precisely. Let's try another one. Let's let's we're no we're no longer in uh, we're no longer in uh, in Europe. We're going to down to South Africa or parts of India. Here you have what we call BS five four six or SANS one six four stroke one. And we're going to plug that in. We have that particular plug here. And let's try this one. Remembering all I'm doing is simulating heat, which is hotter than should be there under normal working circumstances. Again, brilliant. So you can take your fridge anywhere in the world and it won't catch fire. Let's try something else. Let's try Australasia. This is what we call AAS NZS 3112. Let's put that one in. Just, that clip is getting a bit warm because it only should receive the 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 special file works. Here we are now. We're going to plug that in to an, an oh dear, an Australian. Ah, oh, we have got one. Um, 
Right, I'm going to unplug the fridge for a minute. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. The fridge will pretend is still working. But the socket, if the fridge would be plugged into, has gone off. Because I'm trying the heat with the hairdryer as opposed to from the fridge. But it's just a scenario just to test it. There we go. Plugged in the same place so it doesn't work. So there we have it. Four different types. We have uh, uh, making a one for the American style socket, but uh, we haven't done that as yet. But you have four different types, because all fridges are the same. It doesn't matter what voltage, it still works. So that would have stopped the fire in all of those four regions and where those different sockets are used. Same thing, simply by cutting the circuit off and Having that had been fitted in Grenfell, I'm pretty sure there would have been no Grenfell fire. So many, many other fire and electrical engineers all around the world. Thank you for watching.